So that's just me, Wen from Kepler. I'm the co-founder and CTO. I mean, Kepler is about one and a half year old right now, approximately. And uh, we built satellites. Uh, we try to enable satellite communications for the Internet of Things. So the main message I'm trying to bring out today is actually, you know, there's an ongoing democratiz <coughs> democratization of space. And what I mean by that is really, um, you know, the space activity, it's actually moving towards the private sector these days. And um, if you don't believe it, I'll show you some proof points in a bit. And also the industry is actually embracing new space. And I'll explain what I mean by new space in, you know, my slides. So before this slide, it was supposed to be a slide with pictures of uh, Elon Musk and uh, Richard Branson. That, you know, that's why I want to tie on to like Elon is basically, you know, as real of a, you know, real life Iron Man that you can get. You know, he's the real life Tony Stark. But really, you know, what is new space? Terabella. It's a company that is founded in 2009 by four Stanford grads. They're working out of a living room. They raised three million in Series A, and you know, and they raised more and more money. But then by 2012, they actually launched two satellites to to orbit. And this is what I mean by new space, right? Things are moving from the government sector to private sector. And eventually, in last year, they actually got acquired by Google for 500 million dollars. So this is one prime example of what's happening in the new space industry. The second one, Planet Labs. They're, well, they're called Planet right now. They are founded by three former NASA employees. Same idea, you know, over a span of five years, they actually launched over 100 satellites. Never been done before, first time ever. But like, you know, with these new companies and new satellites, they, they don't, you know, they, they bring equal amount of value, if not more than what has been done before. If you look at what's on the left side, so those are what we call old space. These are like big satellites. They're like you know over a thousand kilograms. They cost over like you know several hundred millions of dollars to build, and you know their resolution aren't as great. For new satellites like you know from Terra Bella and from Planet Labs, you can build them for re like a fraction of the cost, and you can get you know same if not better resolution. So the main message is you know lower cost is not lower value, because of you know advancement in technology. So big question: What is driving new space? The main message here is, you know, standardization. S new space is enabled by the standardization in the satellite form factor. What I mean by that is, you know, there's this CubeSat form factor. It specifies what, you know, what a satellite looks like, basically the size and the weight and the, and the basically, you know, it, it specifies like a container for you, very much like how back in the days Intel came together and put together, you know, a roadmap for t how chips are built. Um, you know, uh, there's a few professors at Cal Poly that put together this CubeSat form factor that allows people to basically build components for satellite. So what that has allowed the industry to do is to come up with, you know, lots of components for satellite. For example, these days you can go to like companies like CubeSat Shop, Clyspace. These are companies that build um, components for satellite because of the standardization of, you know, the satellite form factor. and at a low cost of $70,000, and in a time span of six months, you can put together your own satellite just by buying parts and putting together you know, a satellite. Along with that is you know, launching. Obviously, you guys are going to have questions about, like, you, know, you can put together a satellite, how do you launch them? Well, because the satellites are standardized in form factor, launching them is easier than ever before. There are companies that just put together these kind of boxes that will literally push your satellite out into space, on any rocket that is going up to resupply the International Space Station to, to launch like big satellites. So this is really the Uber of space travel. And because you know per rocket you can launch so many of these small satellites, ride sharing it's it's there. You know, it reduces the cost of launching your satellite significantly. So putting all of this together, what it means is in the new space industry, the one on the right hand side, is that we're bringing this agile approach to the aerospace world. In the olden days, the one on the left, legacy world, it takes about five years to build a satellite, and it's supposed to operate for 15 years. In a new space in mentality, we basically build and launch every other year, or every year. So what that has allowed us to do is you know, experiment with a lot of things. Agile, right? We're trying to you know, apply all the software knowledge into space. So, and this is not, you know, this is all because of the standardization in, in CubeSat. Again, that's actually a picture of uh, two CubeSats being launched from the uh, International Space Station. And, you know, as a result, VCs invested more money in space startups in the last year than the previous 15 years combined. In fact, 
Um, from 2000 and two, through to 2015, two and a half, 2.9 billion was invested you know, in space startup, and 1.8 billion was actually invested last year alone. A lot of money is coming to us because you know, new space. What is Kepler doing? We're using all this technology that is happening in the CubeSat industry to the satellite communication world. We're trying to provide M2M services because you know, we see a market there by 2020 that's going to be worth 5.91 billion. What we do in the mountain space, intelligent transportation, in-space con connectivity, remote telematics, and smart agriculture. And yes, 2022, we're launching 50 satellites to provide real-time access to everything in space. That's our mantra. That's our vision. And yes, we are hiring. Thank you. <laughs>